average Americans. They look like anyone you would pass on the street or perhaps be your neighbor. Maybe one of them is. Just regular guys as they sit here. But they're anxious, a bit nervous. Something important is about to happen. They're embarking on a new and radically different career. They will all start out equal because nothing they learned in school or the military or in their previous job will help them on the road which they are about to take. A few years back they signed up to take a test and have recently been notified to appear here today to take an oath. A sacred oath sworn before God, the flag, and their families. A pledge to obey, to serve, and to place themselves in mortal danger. Today, these men are going to become New York City firefighters, and their lives will never again be the same. You people that need the haircuts, not many of you need a haircut, but there are some borderline cases here. I want that hair cut. I want it off your ear, and I don't want it beyond the collar of your shirt. The first thing I'll do Monday morning is look you over. And God help you if your hair and your mustache is not to my liking. I told you before, in no uncertain terms, that if you can't adhere, the military discipline, don't bother coming back here on Monday morning. You'll do me a favor and the rest of the staff and the department a disservice if you decide to come here and think you're going to play games. We do not play games here. Don't bring any newspapers in because you won't have time to read a newspaper. And God help you if you come in here under the influence of either drugs and or alcohol, because if any one of us here at the academy suspect you of being under the influence of either one, you will be immediately escorted down to the medical office for a blood and or urine analysis. And if that comes back positive, you're out of a job. And I really don't care that you're out of a job. Because if you are under the influence, you don't belong on this job. Regardless of what you hear from some of your friends out in the field, that they think this is a cakewalk, I assure you right now that it's not a cakewalk. Myself and the staff at the academy will be on your back eight hours a day, five days a week. We will not let up on you. Any questions? No, sir. No, 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 sir. I can't hear you. No, no, sir. Get up. Sit down. This is what you're going to do for nine weeks. You're going to listen to everything we tell you. Do I make myself clear? Yes, yes sir. Does everybody know what time they're going to be here on Monday? Yes, yes sir. What time? 7.15, sir. What time? 7.15, sir. Make sure you're on time. Take up. Now it begins. The arduous task of turning civilians into disciplined firefighters. Individualism and independence are now replaced by teamwork and obedience. As with the military, learning to follow orders means first learning to march and drill. About three days. I'm going to change you to think as one, to respond as one. You're going to be looking somewhat differently than you look right now. When you come into the auditorium and you're told to stand on your feet. You're going to be given the command on your feet. In unison, you're going to respond by saying, yes, sir, and, respond, and, and promptly up on your feet. Understand? Yes, yes, sir. On your feet. Yes, sir. Sloppy, sloppy. Sit down. 
going to do it together. And it's going to be spontaneous. Are your feet? Yes, sir. Sit down. Try it again. Are your feet? Yes, sir. When you're told to take your seat, it's a privilege to sit down. Your response will be, thank you, sir. Make the same motion, you'll sit down in unison. Understood? Yes, yes sir. sir! Understood? Yes, sir! Thank you, sir! From the very first week, members must face the physical and psychological challenges that modern firefighting poses. For many, it means facing lifelong fears of height or claustrophobia. But there is no shame or teasing for the fearful. Probies are taught to always help and encourage each other. The person you help today may be the person who saves your life tomorrow. Along with mental toughness, there is a heavy emphasis on physical fitness. Every morning begins with either a long run or calisthenics. Probies are lectured on nutrition and the benefits of a proper diet. Habits that begin here will help determine whether these men will finish their firefighting careers in good health or suffer the debilitating effects that so many in the fire service endure. For the incidence of cancer and heart disease among veteran firefighters far exceeds those of the average American. But a healthy body also means a healthy mind. And a healthy mind is well needed because in the brief weeks ahead these students will have more information given to them than at any time in their lives. Their days will be filled with an endless stream of facts and figures on a wide variety of subjects. In the classroom, they are instructed on such topics as building construction and building inspection, cardiopulmonary resuscitation and advanced first aid, operation of the mask and all of its components, arson investigation and their role as a peace officer. The list goes on. Outdoors, probationary firefighters perform hands-on training at the Fire Academy's multi-building facility on Randalls Island. Again, the course load is heavy and covers a wide variety of topics. There's training in ropes and knots, tools, fittings, and the nomenclature that goes along with them. Hose, how to stretch it, pack it, and the proper way to advance a line classes and ladders and the correct way to work with them. Included is the ancient but still used scaling ladder, or as those who have climbed them say, the scary ladder. But fear and anxiety come not just from the ladders. There is also the single slide that is used in case you are cut off, and the rescue pickup when a victim is trapped. And then, of course, there's always fire the car fire, how to extinguish it and know the special dangers it presents, the oil fire and the best way to attack it without letting it attack you. But the one that they talk about and that provides the best training of all is the smokehouse. With its rooms and stairways, instructors teach how to operate in the lethal environment that is the structural fire. A cool head must be maintained in this state-of-the-art facility where the temperatures can reach a thousand degrees Fahrenheit at ceiling level. All right, gentlemen. Let's see if we can find this fire in here. What do you see? What do you see? Blow on the left? To the left, eh? All right. We're going to go to the right. We'll come up behind the fire. We'll push it out the window that way. Let's go to the right this way. All right, the door's in here, right? All right, let's go. Get in, get in there. Can you get in there? Follow the wall to your right. Just get in there. Follow the wall to your right. To your right, behind the door. Make a search. Go all the way down to the end. Make a search in that corner. And then 
church come back? Search the bedroom. You'll have enough time to do that and come back out. All right? You got that? Keep track of your men you're with. We don't want to lose nobody. Okay? Very good. Very good. Thank you. Very good. Very good. Good way to go. Excellent. Very good. A different mood is in the air as the transition to firefighter starts to take effect. Men who only a few short weeks ago lived and worked in vastly different worlds are now able to function as a coordinated unit with a singular purpose. There's a new feeling of confidence and excitement as graduation day finally arrives and the men get their assignments. Guys, you got your orders today, right? Where are you going? I'm going to Washington Heights, ladder 45. I'm going to Park Slope, Brooklyn, USA. Engine 58 Harlem. East New York, engine 233. 92 engine, South Bronx. Engine 231, Glasgow, Brooklyn. 202, Red Hook, Brooklyn. Good luck. Thank, Thank you. you. As they fall in for the final march into the auditorium, the transformation they have undergone is obvious to all. When they first came, their individual, uh, they had their individual personalities, and now they're all uh, functioning as a group. To give you a little demonstration of what I mean. On your feet. Yes, sir! Collectively, what's the count on deck? Sir, the count on deck is 98. Highly motivated, truly dedicated. New York FD broke me, sir. A lead, a lead, a blue machine. Hoo-ha, hoo-ha, hoo-ha. Are you lead? Yes, sir. Are you lead? Yes, sir. Are you a green machine? No, sir. Are you a blue machine? Yes, sir. Take your seat. Thank you, sir. Thank you. When the ceremony is over, the crowd moves outside and the probies get a chance to demonstrate their newly acquired talents. The pressures and restraints of the last nine weeks are finally removed and a good time is had by all. Feats of daring once considered reckless now come as second nature and are performed with precision and timing. It is also a time of goodbye as friends are scattered around the city. 
but many paths will cross again in the years ahead. Now, the training moves into another phase, that of experience, and a new generation of firefighters are born. Countless tragedies will be averted, and many lives will be saved in the coming years as these men place themselves in mortal danger, protecting people and property. For that is the job and the tradition in this great fire department that serves the city we call New York. <laughs>